Good morning class. My name is G. Gautami. I am from EK department. Today I am going to introduce a new subject that is analog and digital electronics. In this subject we have five units. Those are Unit 1 Diodes and Applications Unit 2 DJTs DJT stands for Bipolar Junction Transistors Unit 3 Pets and digital circuits. FET stands for field effect transistors. Unit 4, combinational logic circuits. Unit 5, sequential logic circuits. For this analog and digital electronic subject, we have prescribed textbooks. Those are first one, integrated electronics, analog and digital circuits and systems, second edition by Jacob Milliman. And the second book is Digital Design, which is a fifth edition by Morris Mano. We are going to follow these two prescribed textbooks for our analog and digital electronic subject. Now let us look into the unit 1 in detail. This is the unit 1, Diodes and Applications. In this unit, we are going to study about Junction diode characteristics, open circuited PN junction, PN junction as a rectifier, VI characteristics, effect of temperature, diode resistance, diffusion capacitance, diode switching times, breakdown diodes, tunnel diodes, photodiode, LED. In diode applications, flipping circuits, comparators, half wave rectifier, Silver rectifier, rectifier with capacitor filter. These are the subtopics we are going to study in our unit 1, that is diodes and application. Now, let us first see what is PN junction diode and what is a diode. Now, here we can see the symbol of a diode. In this diagram, we can see anode and cathode. By this we can understand that diode is a two terminal device which has anode and cathode. Anode is indicated by A and cathode is indicated by K. Anode is for positive and cathode is for negative. Now a diode is a simple two terminal electronic device. It allows current to flow only in one direction and blocks the current that flows in opposite direction. The two terminals of the diode are called as anode and cathode. Now, now we can understand that diode is a two terminal device which has cathode and anode. Now move on to next slide where we can see why it is called as diode. Now diode, this name is derived from diode which means a device has two electrodes. Here, di means two and ode means electrode. We can say that it is a device which has two electrodes. Now here we can see the two diagrams in this slide. Here first one we can see the circuit symbol of a PN junction diode where anode and cathode are mentioned. Now look at the below diagram. This is the practical PN junction diode we can see in our laboratories. Here we need to find out what is anode and cathode. To find which side is anode and which side is cathode, we can find a silver line coated on the diode. We can see in this. If we observe the second diagram carefully, we can see a silver line coated on this diode. This silver line terminal indicates cathode. The terminal, this silver, here the silver line is nothing but a cathode. And the next terminal is anode. This is how a practical PN junction diode looks like. And this is how we can identify what is the cathode terminal and what is the anode terminal of a practical PN junction diode. Let us move on to the next slide. In this slide, we are going to see how PN junction diode is formed and 
what is p type and what is n type and how electrons and holes are traveling from one side to other side now in this slide we can see a formation of a diode now how this how this happen if a p type and n type material are brought close to each other both of them join to form a junction this junction is nothing but pn junction formation process now this is called as a pn junction in this diagram we can see p type and n type these two are brought to close to each other now it is forming a region here between p and n and this region is named as depletion region and this region is named as charge free region and in this region ions are formed those are of positive and negative ions now how this is formed and all these things we are going to see in the next slide now here we can see p type material has holes as a majority charge carriers and n type material has electronic as the majority carriers as opposite charge attract few holes in p type tend to go to n type whereas few electrons in n type tend to go to p side as because they are what negative negative charge one side and positive charge one side those are of what opposite charge that is why they are tending to move to each other side now as both of them traveling towards a junction holes and electrons recombine with each other to neutralize and form ions yes whenever positive is going towards the negative side or else whenever hole is moving from p type to n type whenever electron is moving from n type to p type definitely they will recombine why this electron and hole are recombining to neutralize and form ions now this junction there exists region where positive and negative ions are formed just now we have seen in the previous slide between p and n we can see the negative and positive ions which are formed now this is called as a pn junction or a junction barrier why it is called as junction barrier because there is no free charge carriers in that region so no electron and hole will form unless until we apply some voltage now move on to the next slide now we can see here see how negative ions and positive ions are formed between p and n due to the diffusion of electrons and holes now the formation of negative ions on p side and positive ions in n side results in the formation of a narrow charged region on either side of the pn junction this region is now free from the movable charge carriers yes between p and n ions are formed right now this region this region this depletion region is now free from movable charge carriers this means what this mean there are no free charge carrying particles in this region which is what we have mentioned here now here no free charges are there and we can see the narrow charge region formed in p side as well n side yes p side we can see the narrow charge narrow region which is of negative ions and n side we can see a narrow region which is of positive ions now move on to the next slide now the ions present here have been stationary and maintained region of space between them without any charge carrier so far what we have discussed there will not be any free charge carriers and they create some space region of space between them as this region acts as a barrier between p type and n type material this is also called a barrier junction yes now electrons and holes they will not move because in the middle of p and n we have depletion region which is acts as a barrier this has another name called as depletion region just now i have 
told nenu it depletes both the regions yes we can see in the previous slide it is depleted p side as well as n side before before diffusion p side and n side there is no there is no depleted regions when it is when electrons and holes are diffused then depletion regions can form in both the regions in both the p type and n type material now to understand it more clearly how electrons are moving to the p side and how holes are moving to the n side we are going to see one simple and small animation so that it will be more easy for us to understand here i am going to show one small video by which you can understand it very clearly in this video we are going to see how electrons are moving towards p region and how holes are moving towards the end region and how depletion layer is formed just we are going to see the construction of a pn junction layer here is the video p region has a high concentration of metals and n region contains a large number of metal bodies as soon as the junction is formed free electrons and holes cross through the junction by the process of diffusion during this process the electrons crossing the junction from n region into the p region recombine with the holes in the p region very close to the junction similarly holes crossing the junction from the p region into the n region recombine with electrons in the n region very close to the junction thus a region is formed which does not have any mobile charges very close to the junction this region is called depletion region p region has now in our starting of the video we can see here at the junction we have holes which are free to move and in the end region we can see the electrons now this this can move to the p region as well as holes can move towards the n region if these two bond together due to the attraction due to the diffusion or hole is traveling towards the n region and electron is traveling towards the p region whenever electron is moving towards p region this electron goes and recombine with the hole that is what explained in this video you can see here and n region contains a large number of metal bodies as soon as the junction is formed free electrons and holes we can see here how electrons are moving towards the p region and how holes are moving towards the n region and how they are combining by the process of now we can see combine and they formed ions p side we have negative ion and n side we have positive ions first line we can see in the same manner again negative ions are formed in p region and positive ions are formed in the n region process of diffusion during this process the electrons crossing the junction from n region into the p region due to the n region region with thus a region is formed now we can see here here negative ions formed in the p region and positive ions are formed in the n region this entire this entire region from here to here known as depletion region or charge free region means there are no free charges are present between here to here okay and here if you see before the diffusion here holes are present before the diffusion in n side we have electron electrons present here now what happened here 
it is formed what a narrow region is formed a narrow depleted region is formed in the t set here n set also this region is depleted now this electrons will not move because this this is acts as a from here to here act as what barrier now that is why we are calling as what barrier so this is how our en junction is formed this is how depletion layer is formed this depletion region is also known as what child free region why it is naming as child free region because there are no free movable charges are present in this region clear this is this is what this is how our en junction diode is formed as it is a barrier we are naming it as what barrier junction it is also known as what depletion region and here what happens there is no free movable charges are present in barrier junction or in depletion region now let us let us move on to the next slide now in order to understand the operation of a diode it is necessary to study its three operation regions one is equilibrium and the next one is reverse bias and the next one is forward bias in pn junction equilibrium the points are depletion region and built in potential in pn junction under reverse bias condition the point is of the point is junction capacitance in pn junction under forward bias point bias the point is vi capacitance vi characteristics these are the three regions of operation of a diode if you want to understand diode properly we are going to study all these regions of operation of our pn junction diode now let us see what is biasing and uh, what is forward bias of a pn junction diode what is reverse bias of a pn junction diode in the upcoming slide This is a forward reverse bias condition. Before this, let us see types of diodes. These are the types of diode which we have. First one is PN junction diode. We can see practical diode on the right side. Now, this is LED. LED stands for light emitting diode, which we can see right side of LED. Second point, and the third one is photo diode. We can see the diagram of a photo diode here. How photo diode looks practically and the fourth one is zener diode we can see right side how a zener diode is look like and the fifth one is what tunnel diode we can see on the right side how a tunnel diode is look like in a practical scenario now let us move to the next slide where we are going to see what is forward bias and reverse bias of a pn junction diode and what are the vi characteristics of a pn junction diode the pn junction diode has a two terminal device which is formed when one side of pn junction diode is made with p type and doped with n type material this is what we have already studied in the previous slide now see here what i am doing for our forward biasing and what i am doing for reverse biasing if i want my pn junction diode to be in the forward bias condition we can see here for p region side or else for anode side that is positive side i am connecting a positive bio, positive of a battery and for n side that is cathode side that is negative side i am connecting a negative terminal of a battery now what happens when now what happens when i connect like this if i connect in this format p side we have a higher potential and then side we have a 
lower potential this results in forward bias condition when i connect in this format as i am giving positive terminal to the p region here holes are get what holes are get what repelled and these holes are move towards the n side in the same way i am giving negative to the n region now these electrons are moving towards the p side when this is taking place the pn junction or depletion layer will be the small very small now coming to the reverse bias condition what i am doing for n side i am connecting positive and for p side i am connecting negative that means i am connecting negative terminal of the battery for the anode and i am connecting positive battery terminal to the cathode side when negative is negative side is connected to positive now this positive will attract electrons or this electrons electrons are at, get attracted towards the positive terminal of battery now electrons are try to move from n region to towards the battery when electrons are moving what happen when when holes are moving from p region then what's happening the width of the depletion layer will become large because till here three electrons and holes are present till here when i'm going to apply the voltage in this format positive to the n region and negative to the p region this holes and uh, electrons are move away now whenever these are moving in this format here we can see the depletion layer is expanded or it will be the wider now here pn junction in pn junction diode if i connect in reverse bias condition what happen the depletion layer is more the depletion layer width is increased when it increased what happens this electrons doesn't have enough strength to cross this barrier now we know that depletion layer is also called as what barrier because the electrons will not cross that barrier now in this reverse bias condition what happening the barrier width is increased now this electron doesn't have enough energy to jump this barrier or to cross this barrier now flow of current will not be possible here this type of arrangement i can call it as a open switch now coming to the pn junction forward bias condition as for electrons and holes are moving in this format when electrons moving towards the p region and and holes are moving towards n region the depletion width will be very small now i can say that current flow from current flow through this diode now i can say that forward biasing of pn junction diode is act as a closed switch okay one thing we need to remember here when p region side that is anode side when anode potential is greater compared to the cathode potential then pn junction is said to be in the forward bias condition now when anode potential is less compared to the cathode potential then rpn junction diode is said to be in the reverse bias condition right reverse bias condition what happens the depletion layer of a pn junction diode will be increased in such a way that this electrons will not cross this wider depletion region now this we can visualize as a open switch see if i give current here it will not cross here because the switch is open no it won't go now if you come to the forward bias what happen electrons moving this side and holes moving 
to the end region. Now the current will flow because very small depletion layer is present. This due to this small depletion layer our electrons and holes have enough energy to cross this barrier. Now in forward bias condition the barrier is small so that our my so that electrons are cross this barrier easily. For reverse bias condition barrier is very wide so that my electrons will not cross this barrier. Now reverse I am calling it as open and forward bias I am calling as a closed switch because current is flowing. In reverse bias, in reverse bias condition current will not flow. Now in our first slide we have seen that PN junction diode will allow current to flow in only one direction and it will block in the other direction. This is what it meant. It is allowing the current to flow in the one, direct, one direction and it is blocking the current to flow in the other direction. This is what it meant. In this forward condition it is allowing the current and reverse condition it is not allowing the current to flow because it is a open circuit and this is a closed switch and this is what open switch this is how current is current is going to flow in a one direction this is what uh, this is what about a forward and reverse bias of a pn junction diode let us move move on to the next slide where we can see the vi characteristics of a pn junction diode now, if you plot current and voltage in the forward bias condition, the graph will be seen in this format. Now, if we plot the graph between reverse in reverse bias condition between voltage and current, this will be of this kind. Here we can see the breakdown voltage up when we increase the voltage after this breakdown our diode may damage now in a forward bias condition we can see that current is we can see that current is increased that's what we have seen see current is going to flow now here current is increased in a forward bias condition if you see in the reverse bias condition what happening current is not increased and this is of micro ampere range whereas in forward bias condition current is of milli ampere range now we can see here current and voltage relationship in forward bias current increases exponentially in reverse bias low leakage current equal to i naught means here current will not flow but there will be a leakage current which is equals to which is normally equal to i naught a bit of pn junction to pass current in only one direction is known as a rectifying behavior we have seen in the first slide we have we have seen that current will flow in a only one direction it is flowing in only one direction we can name it as what rectifying behavior we can see the current equation of a diode here that is id is equals to i naught into e power vd divided by meter vt minus 1 which is of amperes now this is how we can plot the vi characteristics of a pn junction diode now as we have a uh, barrier potential after the barrier potential only your current is going to increase now what is the barrier potential for pn junction diode 0 0.7 volts and what is the barrier potential for the zena diode that is 0 0.3 volts now this is about how a pn junction diode is going to behave in a forward bias condition and reverse bias condition if we plot the voltage and current graph between uh, if I want to plot 
the graph between voltage and current for a boy bias condition it will result in this format and if i plot voltage and current voltage and current for reverse bias condition that will be in this format now here we can see the terms vt is equals to kt by q and vt is diode terminal voltage in volts i not is temperature dependent saturation current and t is absolute temperature of pn junction and k is boltzmann constant q is electron charge and n is empirical constant so that is one for germanium and two for silicon the q value is 1.16 ampar minus 19 cool and boltzmann constant is 1.28 into 10 power minus 23 j per k this is about the pn junction where we had characteristics and the current equation now let us move to the next slide in this slide we are going to see effect of temperature on vi characteristics of a pn junction diode if you see on the right side we can see a pn junction diode vi characteristics now if you look at the graph carefully we can see temperature t1 and t2 and t3 as the temperature is increasing our curve is shifting towards the axis by this we can say that in forward bias it shifts to 2.5 millivolts per degree centigrade now if you see in the reverse bias condition we can also find t1 and t2 and t3 by this you can say that in reverse bias condition, because of the reverse saturation current of silicon diode, doubles for every 10 degree centigrade rose in temperature. That means for every 10 degree centigrade, there will be a current, saturation current that will be doubled. Now let us move to the next slide. In this slide, we are going to see diode resistance. We have two types of diode resistance, one is static resistance or DC resistance and the other one is dynamic resistance or AC resistance. In static resistance we have forward resistance and reverse resistance. In dynamic resistance we have forward resistance, reverse resistance. Now diode resistance, del V by del I is called AC dynamic resistance of a diode because we consider small change in voltage. AC resistance is also called as dynamic resistance and we are considering small change in the voltage. We would not want to calculate AC resistance between 0 0.55 volts and 0 0.65 volts. Rd is given by del V by del I which is in ohms as we know resistance is given by v by i the dc resistance of a diode is found by dividing dc voltage across it by dc current through it dc resistance also called the static resistance rd is equals to v by i ohms diode is non-linear in both the ac and DC sense that is both its DC and AC resistance change over a wide range. <coughs> now, in this slide, we can see how to calculate AC and DC resistance from the graph. AC resistance or dynamic resistance RD is given by RD is equals to del V by del I. From the graph, we can take like this. And DC resistance that is static resistance rd is v by i we can see here how we are taking now let us move to the next slide in this we are going to see diode capacitance in this slide we are going to see transition capacitance cp the change of capacitance at the depletion region can be defined as the change in electric charge per change in voltage that is Cp is equals to dq by dv, where Cp is transition capacitance, dq is change in electric charge, dv is change in voltage. 
the transcript capacitance from in mathematical mathematically written as T is equal to epsilon A by W. Epsilon is permittivity of semiconductor and A is area of plate or T type and enter regions. W is width of diffusion region. Now on the left hand side we can see the reverse bias of a PN junction diode and here we can see holes on three electrons and we can see the depletion region also and we can see negative and positive ions. Let us move to the next slide. In this slide we are going to see diffusion capacitance or storage capacitance that is CD. Diffusion capacitance is due to the storage of minority carriers in forward bias diode. Diffusion capacitance is directly proportional to the electric current or applied voltage. If large electric current flows through the diode, the large amount of charge is accumulated near the diffusive layer and it is accumulating as a result large diffusion capacitance occur. When the width of depletion region decreases, the diffusion capacitance increases. The diffusion capacitance value will be in the range of nanofarad to microfarad. On the left hand side, we can see forward bias of RPN junction there where we can see the narrow depletion region and we can see negative ions and positive ions. Negative ions on the P side and positive ions on the N side. Now, we need to see the expression for CD. Now, the formula or expression for diffusion capacitance is CD equals to dQ by dV. dV, where CD is diffusion capacitance, dQ is change in number of minority carriers stored outside the depletion region and dv is changing voltage applied across diode diffusion capacitance occurs in power bias pn junction diode diffusion capacitance is also sometimes referred to as storage capacitance it is denoted as c suffix d now let us see the switching characteristics of a PN junction diode. Now the sudden change from forward to reverse and from reverse to forward bias affects the circuit. Yes, whenever you are changing dynamically from one state to other state, that will affect our circuit. Now the time the time taken to respond to such sudden changes is the important criterion to define the effectiveness of an electric electrical switch. The time taken before the diode recovers its steady state is called recovery time that is TRR. The time interval taken by the diode to switch from reverse bias state to forward bias state is called as forward recovery Time. The time interval taken by the diode to switch from forward bias state to reverse bias state is called as reverse recovery time. Now let us see what is storage time and transition time. So storage time is nothing but the time period for which the diode remains in the conduction state even in the reverse biased state is called as storage time. The transition time is the time elapsed in returning back to the state of non-conduction that is steady state reverse bias is called transition time. Now let us see the graphical representation. In the first waveform we can see input voltage and in the next one, we can see minority charge, charge carrier concentration. And in third one, we can see diode current and we can see the ideal response.
and in this we can see storage time us and transition time p suffix p suffix t and in the last one we can see reverse recovery time that is p r r now this is how we can see the switching characteristics of a diode and reverse recovery time t r r is equals to storage time t s and transition time p suffix t now uh, today i want to conclude that so far we have studied what is pn junction diode how pn junction diode is going to work under forward and reverse bias condition and we have seen effect of temperature on vi characteristics of pn junction diode and we have seen dynamic and static resistance of a pn junction diode and we have seen diode capacitances and we have seen switching characteristics of pn junction diode so far we have studied about all of these thank you